Welcome everyone to the presentation of our CVPR paper, Zero Shot Noise to Noise. As we all know, neural networks trained on a data set achieve state-of-the-art denoising performance. But the problem is that building a data set is difficult, expensive, or in some cases, not even possible. That led people to research in data set-free methods, but such methods either require heavy compute, have poor performance, or are tailored for a specific noise distribution and do not work well for other noise models. We propose a new uh, data set free algorithm that performs well on different uh, noise levels and distributions, and at the same time is low on compute. So you could execute it in a relatively short period of time, even on a CPU. So our setup is as follows. We're doing zero shot denoising, so we're only given the noisy test image, no data set whatsoever. We're also doing blind denoising, so we have no knowledge of the noise distribution or level. With the rise of deep learning, people have started training networks to map noisy to clean images, which is known as supervised training. Then we have seen that it is possible to train networks only on the noisy images without having any clean images. Zero shot methods take this a step further and assume no access whatsoever to any data set. Only the noisy image that you want to denoise is given to you. Current zero shot methods are BM3D, deep image prior, and self to self. Let's check the drawbacks of the existing methods. BM3D is tailored for Gaussian noise, which means it's not going to work well for other distributions, as we will see later in the experiments. Deep image prior has poor performance and has a hyperparameter, which is the early stuffing iteration. So very critical for the performance, and it's hard to determine in advance. Self-self works very well, but requires very long denoising times. It takes more than one hour on a GPU to denoise a relatively small image. Also works uh, bad in the regime of low noise levels, as is the case with all blind spot networks. Last thing, it relies heavily on assembling. Assembling is averaging the output of several uh, networks. So this causes a slight increase in the scores, but blurs the image slightly so you lose some details. So our goal is to have a method that reaches a good trade-off between performance and generalization on different uh, distributions and levels, and at the same time, be low on compute, memory and speed, basically. So our method is very simple consists of the first step is to convolve the noisy test image with two fixed filters, which will yield two downsampled images. Next step is to train a lightweight network with regularization to map one downsampled image to the other. So the first element is the downsampling scheme. We want it to be very fast. And then we have the loss function and the lightweight network. We need to uh, design them in such a way that uh, would not overfit since we're only training on one, Im one image. And the network, for example, needs to be very small so that it's fast and also does not overfit. So let's start with the downsampling scheme, which is motivated by neighbor to neighbor. The assumption is that nearby pixels of green image are very correlated, while the noise is independent and unstructured. So you could downsample a noisy image into a pair of smaller images, which then serve as an approximation of two noisy observations, but of the same clean image. So here's how we do the downsampling. We divide the image into two by two patches, and then we average the diagonal pixels. You can see here an example on the right for a natural image. The input is a high resolution image, and the output is two uh, images of half the spatial resolution. How do we do that? With, by, with those uh, filters, as we can see here, we convolve the image with those filters. We do 2D depth-wise convolutions with stride two. This downsampling scheme is very uh, fast to execute. Next up is our loss function. We uh, do residual learning, which is training the network to fit or learn the noise in the image. Then to denoise the image, so this is a denoising block, we subtract the output of the network, which is the noise from the noise image to denoise the image. So here we map Y1 to Y2. Remember that Y1 and Y2 are the downsampled versions of our image Y. This is the loss motivated by noise to noise. Then out of symmetry, if you map Y1 to Y2, we could also say we map Y2 to Y1. So if you use this loss to denoise the image, this is going to work very well. But at some point, you're going to overfit, and the performance is going to start to decrease. And of course, you don't never know when you should stop. So to overcome that, we propose the uh, consistency loss, which prevents uh, overfitting, and therefore, you don't need to early stop. And the consistency loss is as follows. We say that downsampling the image, so Y1 here, is a downsampled version of the image. If you downsample the image and then you denoise it, pass it through the denoiser, should be equivalent to first denoising the image. So Y here is the full resolution image, and then downsampling. 
And out of symmetry, whatever we do for y1, we also do for y2. Now the total loss is just the sum of both the residual and the consistency loss. This network F is just a very small network, consists of only two layers and amounts to around 20,000 parameters. Compare this to the you know, the networks that we see nowadays, which contain millions of parameters, and we can see the amount of compute that we save. Now, to check the um, results on artificial noise, we have on Gaussian and Poisson noise on different noise levels. We can see that BM3D, which is this uh, red line, performs very well on Gaussian noise, but you can see the big drop uh, on Poisson noise. Next is DIP. Generally, it is works fine, but you can see that it's always less than the other baselines. Self to self performs very well here on Poisson noise, also on Gaussian, but on the low noise level, it does not work so well, for example. Also, we tested this uh, ensemble free version, which we denote here with this orange curve and the uh, asterisks. And you can see that without ensembling, it does not work so well, it drops significantly. So we have to ensemble, which is train several networks and then average the output. So our method in general performs best and performs well on both distributions and on all noise levels. For natural noise, we tested on real-world camera noise for two data sets on RGB images and on the microscope noise uh, with gray scale images. And if you can, if you look at the numbers, you're going to see that all methods uh, work the same, very similarly, except of course for BM3D, that is only going to work well for Gaussian noise, uh, as we saw in the previous slide. Since we were uh, doing grayscale denoising, we found this newly proposed uh, zero-shot method that does grayscale denoising. So we thought we should compare it with our method, which we do on some MRI uh, knee images. And as we can see here, uh, this method slightly uh, improves or gets better scores than ours. However, the image is very blurry and loses some details, very probably because they also use ensembling in their method. As you can see here, this dot in the middle is missing, whereas you can see it in our method or here in the original clean image, also, all the details here are blurred compared with the original image or compared to our method. So in general, this is to show you that you could have a method that gets slightly worse scores but produces much sharper images. Now, if you come to compute, these are, these are the PSN scores, uh, PSN R scores on a Poisson denoising. And as we can see, our method uh, is faster than all other methods. Only BM3D is faster, but you can see the difference in performance. Here's just summarizing those numbers again in this table. Also check the network size. Ours is like 22,000. However, the IP and self-self like require millions of parameters. So to conclude, we've seen the problems that are associated with the current zero-shot methods, and we propose a new method that performs well, requires moderate compute in terms of memory, it could be run on a CPU, and also generalizes well. Thank you for your attention, and here are our references.